Hello! I'm just parked after doing my Target pickup and I thought I would answer this question um, with a video because it's a good question because we all come up against unexpected um, purchases that couldn't be avoided and that we did not predict would happen. I want to preface this video with I am not a budgeting financial expert guru anything like that I'm just somebody who has been running the family budget since 2010 and before that I was I took over my parents budget and finances when I was 16 so this is just real-world experience I, I've taken from you know other experts out there and then we just created a system and um, yeah that's just our own so um, what this uh, comment is in response to is um, when we lost power on like October 1st that night before through October 1st we lost power for 13 hours and we lost 90% of what was in our refrigerator so I was going to have a grocery, you know, trip to make anyway for the week, but there was probably maybe a hundred dollars worth of food we bought that we were not anticipating we needed to buy because we didn't need it until we lost the power. Um, so we were repurchasing things that were just going to stay long term in the fridge, like, you know, mayo, um, as well as things like cottage cheese and Greek yogurt that, um, we don't need every week we get maybe every two weeks but we needed to get it this time coffee cream or eggs things like that things that we did not anticipate on getting this particular grocery trip we needed to get it's also hard because this was the first grocery trip of October I budget monthly so we lost nearly half of our grocery budget more than half in this one trip we budget five hundred dollars a month for groceries and this budget this this grocery trip came to like 270 and change or something so first I budget 500 a month but every month if I have anything left over in my envelope categories I try to put some of the extra to the next month's grocery budget for example from September to October I was able to put an extra hundred dollars left over from September budgets like envelopes into October. So in reality, we have 600 to work with, but we're gonna play this game as if that extra 100 doesn't exist and what would we do? Because in all honesty, who knows if that 600 is even gonna cut it by the end of the month. You just don't know. <laughs> so we charge everything. While we use a cash methodology, we charge everything and then we pay everything in full with cash, you know, that we put in the bank and it pays the credit card bill. But every morning I check the credit card bill and I note any charges and where they come from in our category. So I keep track of how much is being spent in our categories like groceries, gas, cat food, you know, things like that. So right now, this kind of gives us some time to feel out how we would handle um, this extra money we're going to need for groceries because we know our monthly budget for it might not cut it so we can kind of sit back and wait and see where we can pull that money from because I've charged it and it, that charge is waiting for us to pay I'll explain what that means more so in our case we have two options and this is our case this isn't anybody else's case we have two options one we can take any um, money that goes over in groceries because of the $100 or more we had to spend in recouping what we lost. We can take that money from our emergency fund. We can, you know, personally in our family say this is an emergency in, you know, our eyes. So we'll use our emergency fund to offset the costs of this month's grocery budget whether that's eighty dollars a hundred and eighty dollars whatever it is we'll pull it from our savings in our emergency fund and call it a day and that could be the scenario if my scenario number two doesn't pan out money is fluid we tell it what to do 
I'm going to put this amount in this category. I'm putting this amount in this category. I can also tell this category, go cover something in that category. I'm the money. I'm the boss of the money. So lately, our gas budget has been less. Now that my husband is working closer to home, um, we used to budget $300 a month for gas. Now we're, we're maybe breaking 180. We're under 200. Um, so I can say, Hey, gas money at the end of the month, I'm going to say to that gas money, I'm going to shift you over to groceries. You are not serving a purpose right now, but I got a purpose for you. And that's to cover the groceries. And I will say when I first started budgeting, I didn't do this. It drove my husband nuts um, because I would say, hey, we're out of money in that category. No more spending for that category. He's like, yeah, but we're way under budget here. So if we need something over there, just pull it from over there. And I'd be like, uh-uh, because that category is for that uh, topic, not that topic. That was so silly of me. I tell the money what to do, plain and simple. So if I want to shift money over there one time, then that's what I do. So if I run short at the end of the month because of this unexpended purchase of the groceries, I can look through my categories and see what I have extra money in and pull it into the groceries and offset that cost. So it's, if it's gas, if it's, you know, I have an envelope for buying things for my kids, like, you know, my daughters and pull-ups or baby wipes or, you know, their vitamins, if I have leftover in that category, I can just take that money and put it into the groceries. Um, if by chance I don't have anything left over or not enough to cover what we spent in groceries, then I can pull it from the emergency fund because it's an, it was an emergency. Some, some people might not consider it an emergency, but we were rebuying food. That could be an emergency to somebody. But hopefully with the money that I rolled over from September into this month, October, I won't have to use my scenario too and say pull any extra money from gas. At the end of the day, as long as you have money somewhere to pay for it, <laughs> it's it's winning. Um, and fortunately, I I can I can probably swing something somewhere, or it comes from the emergency fund. Um, yeah, because this was a one-time unexpected thing. That wasn't anybody's fault. It's not like we walked through Aldi going on a shopping spree. This was, oh my gosh, we lost all of our creamer and all of our eggs and all of our dairy and all of our deli meat and all of our food leftovers for dinner that we were planning on eating. Um, you know, it was out of our control. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. Um, that's just how we're gonna handle this particular situation. Um, yeah. And um, if you have any other questions or if any of this didn't make sense, please let me know so I can try to clarify for you whether I type clarify it or I do a follow-up video. Um, but yeah, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for asking this question. Um, I know sometimes asking questions about how people spend their money or how people you know, handle a financial situation, it can, it, it can make people feel embarrassed or they're afraid they're gonna offend, but I don't, I, please don't be embarrassed and I'm not offended. It's a good question. Um, and sometimes we just have to hear real world answers that don't come from like, you know, a financial popular guru. You know, sometimes it just helps to hear somebody else, your average Joe, you know what I mean? So yeah, thank you for asking that question. I hope you're doing well. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.